Okay, looks like we got some new parts in. So we have a new crank down in that box, and the pistons, and a new breather. So let's see what those parts look like here. They've been on order for three weeks and some shipping time, so yeah, eight up a month. It's pretty quick these days. Nobody makes nothing, so there you go. pretty bad when they tell you they got something in stock and then you order it and then oh we don't have it no more oh, well thank you note telling me we're bad all right paperwork lots of paperwork okay this should be a new crank and we, you, we will be rebuilding this. The last new crank lasted 500 miles, so we'll see if this one goes better. So, knucklehead stuff. What do they give you for knucklehead instructions? Probably for an Evo anyway. SL, like, yep, that'd be Evo. And they're giving the stroker chart here, so... Here, take a snapshot of that if you want a, all the good information on the Harley. All your different flywheel codes and stuff like that. That's what you want to read. Yeah, it's in the book. I haven't seen it separate like this before. Now you're supposed to drill your cylinders for lower feed when the piston comes past too low. Great. What else is new? Pinion shaft installation instructions. Ooh. Ooh, they got bearings and everything in there. If you have this type bearing versus this one, the snap ring's in a different location on the shaft. See now this crank here is for knucklehead. They don't even use this kind of stuff, so it doesn't even make any difference at all. Yeah. Well, I guess this is where they talk about it. Now SNS does make different thickness thrust washes to help compensate for some of that. The stock thrust wash of 70 thou, they make 50 thou ones, so. You can play around a little bit. Also, you don't have any snap ring. When you have no wash at all, thrust washer is a real thick snap ring. If you have a real thin snap ring, you definitely got to run the thrust washer. Why don't they tell you that in there? Probably not. Ooh, right, wrong. I don't know how you could ever put it in backwards. It only goes in one way. I guess there's a way of doing it wrong. The thing is, when you flip it around, the bevel doesn't change direction. So I don't know why they're drawing a the picture opposite. Who knows? They'll figure it out. Ooh. Schnuckle heads. Well, they got the 36 part, not the 99 part. Ooh, more flywheel codes and strokes. Oh, this is year fitment. Ooh. Very important here. Took a snapshot of that one. Boom. <clears throat> Pinion shaft changes. No duh. Oh, you're supposed to check to see if your cases are machine flat. Oh, what if they're not? Send it back to us and else and make them right? Yeah. That's the problem with those knuckle cases over there, those new ones. Two sets of base gas and it still leaks. Might be a problem with machining in there. Well, you're supposed to have in play between your rods. Yeah, 20 thou would be nice. Under 10 is not nice. 50 is okay. That's too much reading. There's no pictures. Oh, there we go. Got out pictures. Oh, that's how you scribe it if you're doing a stroker kit. The nut hits the case. Here's your oil hole. You're supposed to drain a cylinder. You know, dumbass, instead of doing that crap like that, just drill the hole straight down through the case and you have to worry about weakening your cylinder. The hole just goes straight down, comes out the bottom, boom, done, simple. I don't have a left case to show you. Yeah, it's easy. Why do all of the crap? All you're doing is weaken the case, 
stupid. Yeah, when the rods hit the case, grind it away. Duh. That's only if you got a stroker motor. This is a stock crank. Oh no, actually this is a stroker crank. I forgot. When the pistons hit the flywheel, that's bad. You need at least 30 thou clearance. 50 is okay. Here's your breather timing if you want to actually go do it. Nobody actually does that. Requires a degree wheel and a lot of effort. But if you want to make the thing correct, that's how you do it. We can put the reed valve in there. Oop, did I say that? Uh oh. Alright, enough of that crap. Packed nicely. Pick it up by a rod, you will not damage anything. I've had guys tell me you damage a rod when you do that. Boy, are they stupid. Alright, extra box. Boom, box pile. Instructions, we already read them. They're done. These have oil on them so they don't rust. It makes them slimy when you touch them. Wipe it off a little bit and you won't get so dirty. Well, they don't deep burn nothing, do they? Jeez. Making these things cheaper and cheaper, aren't they? in play we got oh yeah there's 20 in there perfect just like I like it loose see That's what you want to see rods are nice and thick here and thin up here it's kind of opposite how they're supposed to be get the clearance See the rod move? This one's got more, see? It's actually got the same clearance, just narrower. Yeah, they don't deburr these things. Yeah, it is deburred, I guess. Why don't they just make them right? They ain't deburred on that side. That side's sharp. Big asshole. Can they make that hole any bigger? Yeah. Cheaper and cheaper how they make stuff these days. Yep. Oh well. Versus a rod like this, which is made more round. Yeah. These are nice. Alright. That is sharp. Put yourself on there. I got the hole in there. So you're gonna pull that out to true it. Yeah, we'll be taking this thing apart here in short order to make sure it is correctly done. Crank pile. Oh, look at that. It's a crank pile. And the rag. Always cover up your, you know, preferably a cleaner rag than that. Here's one. Keeps debris from going down. And if you cover up the bearing journals on the shelves, they don't rust. Moisture always drops straight down. If you've ever been in fog, it never goes sideways. It always goes straight down. Unless there's a wind blowing, it goes straight down. So as long as you cover up your parts, 
they won't rust. They can be open on the bottom, just straight down. It's one of the tricks. And plus, any dirt stuff will get in there. Or it's not can't go in there if you cover it. <sighs> pistons. Okay, here's a new breather valve, and there's our new set of pistons. So the old breather valve went in the junk box, I think. Yep. So here is the junk case with the bad hole. So we're going to see what it looks like with this brand new part. Uh, crap across there. I ain't going to take that out with one hand. Alright, that's it for one hand. Back to two hands. I'm pretty good, but I ain't that good. I haven't figured out how to cut stuff with one hand yet and do filming. Never court toward yourself, you might cut yourself. I think it matches my shirt. Look at that. Oh, they got a big ass hole in there. So that's a knucklehead valve. Big ass slots. The one they had repop and an original. So this is the German copy. Looks like an SNS, doesn't it? Yeah, a little bit different. A little bit smaller one on that one, the German one. Whoever made that one. This here has a correct screen in it. This is not very high flow. If you can tell, 50% of that is blocked by the screen. This is about 80, this is about 75% open, 25% blockage. This will not flow anywhere near the air volume that this will. So this is performance, or like it's supposed to be, and this is constipated, like it's not supposed to be. This is cheap crap. This is good stuff. This is Harley, genuine. So instead of having a big slot in there, you got a hole. Instead of being another big slot over here, Oh, they have a hole. Now, one advantage of SNS is over Harley is the full width of the screen has a screen hole. This one here is blocked by the retainer that holds it in. So, made differently on the inside. So, you can see, but oh well. Plus, Harley has no washer. This one you got to buy a washer. So, we have to get a washer. And this is the late style washer, which is a uh, uh, late 78 and later, 80 inch size. So I'm going to have to get a washer for it. More expense. So I like this a lot better than this one over here. This one's crap. But having these big slots in here, I don't know how this can affect the breathing of the motor going up and down. I don't have a shovel head breather or a pan head breather to compare them between that and this. I'll have to dig up one somewhere. I'm not sure where I have one lately around here. One thing about moving, everything went to storage. Don't have a lot of porous laying around here. Okay, we're gonna see how this fits. So, this is junk. This is Harley. And this is what we got to work with now. All right, let's see what we got. It went in. Definitely not tight. That's a long way from being tight. Okay, let's see what we got over here. Ugh. It'd be nice if they made these things five over. That way you could just slip in a case it's bad and clean it up and make it work. But that'd be too easy. So, 1022 that way. One oh twenty on the bottom, great. Okay, go that way then. I don't care how we do it. Just trying to measure it. Twenty-two. 
22. Repop. Just the one that was in it. Twenty three. Where's the slot at? Keep measuring with the slot at. I want to measure with the slot is. Twenty three. One thousand bigger. This is the genuine Harley one. Twenty-three. Twenty-three. All right, so that's an S makes their crap one size too small. There's a thou and a half under. One thou under. So they make their stuff loose. Nice. All right, I'm so much for tightening up the hole. And at least it's better than what it was. Now one thing you can do is you can put coating on this, piston coating, and tighten it up. And it'll probably wear to fit. Use the hard stuff, not the soft stuff. That'll make it tighter. One trick you can do, but that'd have to be made. A lot of work doing that stuff.